Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Law of One Spiritual Advice Podcast. My name is L. We are back again today to speak about some Law of One material, and then, yeah, I will share my opinions and reflections on what is within the material. So today, we are going to be doing another raw quote, and uh, this one is going to be about accelerating your progress and how you may do that, or maybe do you even want to do that. But basically, how would you accelerate your progress if you are wanting to, um, you know, sort of progress spiritually or um, learn the lessons that you're, you're here to learn, and the many finer aspects about that. So this is going to start with, um, this is session 10.12, so 10.12. Um, you can get links to this through my website, theoneinfinitecreator.com, and then there are links to all the LL research material where you can download this all for free. So this is session 10.12, and the questioner, I'm going to read the questioner's question first and then Ra's answer. So the questioner says, quote, Although many entities are not aware of this, what they really desire is to accelerate their growth, and it is their job to discover this while incarnate. Is it correct that they can accelerate their growth much more while incarnate in third density than in between incarnations of this dens density? Ra answers, Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. We shall attempt to speak upon this concept. The law of one has one of its primal distortions, the free will distortion, thus each entity is free to accept, reject, or ignore the mind-body-spirit complexes about it and ignore the creation itself. There are many among your social memory complex distortion who at this space, sorry, at this time space engage daily, as you would put it, in the working upon the law of one in one of its primal distortions, that is, the ways of love. However, if this same entity, being biased from the depths of its mind-body-spirit complex towards love-light, were then to accept responsibility for each moment of the time-space accumulation of present moments available to it, such an entity can empower its progress in much the same way as we describe the empowering of the call of your social complex distortion to the Confederation. End of quote. Okay, so maybe it's not super clear, but the funny thing is when Ross speaks sometimes is they're really just trying to say something actually quite simple. Um, however, they, in their um, attempts to be very specific and to avoid distortion, they use so many fancy words and, and um, you know, additional words that it can kind of over overburden your mind trying to interpret it all when if you were to maybe have somebody just put it down in a simple sentence you might think oh wow this is actually not that intense of a thing that's being told to me so i mean what is it just basically saying here in a in a just a very simple general way uh basically i would say is that your free will is the most important thing in the universe um it is like the call that you put out you know it is as you seek, you shall find. So if you have your free will and you are just um, living your life, you then have the ability to sort of reject the creation or accept the creation or just ignore it completely. Um, and within those sort of three possibilities, uh, there lies the the primal distortion, which is of the law of one, which is the ways of love. And so you kind of no matter what you're doing in a way, you are still working on the ways of love because everything is the creator and therefore you are always having creator interacting with creator and the creator is love. So there's always some distortion of love um, that you're, you know, you're always dealing with kind of no matter what, how much you ignore to a certain extent the creation, you know, you're still working with lessons of love. However, if you then use your free will and your focus um, and your will to accelerate your growth, or maybe just to, ex what would it be, just to maximize your potential? I'm not sure how to explain it. I'm thinking just like, you want to do well, right? Maybe like I, I'm a fairly conscientious person. And so to me, it just feels naturally that I want to do well. Like if I'm here to do something, I don't want to necessarily half-ass it. I want to, I want to, you know, make the creator proud or whatever that may be. Uh-oh, pride, right? Okay. But anyways, um, 
If you focus on that moment, the love in the moment, you realize that all is the creator, everyone is the creator, everything is the creator, every thought, every being, every emotion, all of that is just love interacting with love. Well, then you can sort of sep <laughs> funny, separate yourself from the illusion of separation, um, meaning, you know, you come into the truth of, of what is and that everything within your purview is for you to learn lessons of love. Every experience that you have is a lesson of love, whether you like it or not. And the more that you think that that, you know, this, this uh, illusion in front of you today, this experience, there's no way this could be of, of love. Well, the more that you think that, the more that you absolutely are wrong and you need to look into that further because every experience contains love. If you think it doesn't contain love, then maybe that is why you are there. So you are the potential uh, sitting in the sort of seemingly non-loving area so that you can inject some love into that moment. But more so, the real truth is, is even without your interjection of, of what you think is correct, it's more about recognizing everything for what it is, which is that everything out there is a distortion of love, no matter what the personality husk or the illusion tries to sort of convince you of otherwise. So the moment is now. You put your focus on accelerating your progress, but more so just trying to recognize the love in the moment. Those are almost the same thing. Um, so the moment contains love. Everyone is the creator. Everything is the creator. As you're able to look at those things and, and accept them as true, you know, you're going to run into other things where your mind says, no, no, that's, that's not the creator. No, no way. Um, so first of all, your mind is wrong. Um, but that's okay because there's always these, you know, two aspects of ourselves. So um, how would you then uh, work with those things. So, I mean, that, that's great. So anytime something like that happens to you where you're thinking, oh no, this is not love. Uh, well, great. You've just been given a gift. So you now have a trigger, which you now can in inspect, you know, anytime that your reaction is something that is not in love, um, then this is a good gift that you've been given. And if you're willing to work with yourself in meditation and contemplation, when it comes to inspecting those, uh, triggers within yourself that you have sort of determined that have been triggered not in love, well, then that is a pathway to accepting and loving your shadow. And so, uh, you know, I like to think of this metaphor. I, I was even, as I was thinking about this podcast and writing it down, I, I was thinking, well, you know, the more that you stand and, and look at the light, right, the closer you get to the light, the more defined your shadow is. So how would it be that you know, you want to be getting closer to the light, well, you're just going to have a more defined shadow, like a darker shadow, you're gonna have darker aspects of yourself, uh, right? That seems really confusing. Well, uh, then I remembered that the idea is, is not necessarily to, you know, put yourself between the light, right? And maybe that is what creates your shadow is that you have not become transparent enough to the light itself, you may first start to seek the light, but eventually you need to come, become transparent to the light. So you seek spirituality and love and truth, and you're walking towards the light, and as you walk towards the light, your shadow gets deeper and darker. And so that is your opportunity to sort of turn around and recognize that shadow. It's not something that does not exist. It is very real. Um, however, it is somewhat illusory. So how do you then begin to work with the shadow? Well, that's you inspecting your triggers. Anytime you feel something is not in love, you take that into meditation. You try to figure out why it is love. And then within that, you are sort of setting yourself up for the future and in that moment to, to become more transparent to the light and the love and, and what is. So, you know, the creator is all, the creator is unconditional love and free will and intelligent infinity, all these sorts of things. Um, the creator is mystery, so there's no real point in defining it. But what I could try to explain is that as you're trying to become transparent to the light, it's sort of like your chakra system. The, the light comes up through your feet, up through the up through the the bottom all the way up through the top and as it goes through you these are sort of like filters of perception um, I like to think of them as like your you know the light is coming into your personality and this personality is somewhat illusory um, but it comes into the personality and your sh in your body and your energy system and then your body starts to distort the light and that's fine the distortion of that light is who you are it determines your lessons it's because you are here learning lessons that you're not completely perfect and that's why um, it's okay that you're like imperfectly perfect but the idea is is that as you are in 
incarnate and you are working towards progress, you're, you know, eventually just trying to become more transparent to the light, trying to let the little self of your personality step out of the way and let the love and the light of the creator flow through you. Um, I believe I'm trying to do this off my mind, so you think it would be really in my mind, but the three steps are, what is it? Know the creator, accept the creator, become the creator. Right? These are sort of the three steps in, in spiritual evolution. So you may see how, you know, knowing the creator is like seeing the light. Accepting the creator is, uh, I suppose, walking towards the light. And at the same time, you know, accepting that your shadow exists. And then becoming the creator is becoming transparent to that light. And, and slowly letting the light come through you. And, you know, the shadow dissipating, I, I suppose, until you are you know, standing in the full light of the sun, which not many people do, right? They say in another place in the text that there are many people who grope in the moonlight. And that's okay. We're all here to learn our lessons and we all have our time. And our time will be uh, different compared to everyone else. Nobody has the same timing in this universe. Okay, so then I just want to end on, you know, when you're becoming transparent and, and letting your little self step out of the way, that's very obscure. It's like, what the heck are you even talking about, right? Um, I guess in this third density that we're in, Ra explains elsewhere that it is imperative to graduate from this third density that one understand that they do not understand. So this is why I bring up that the creator is ultimately mystery. However, they, you know, the creator, we can say with some certainty, is also love. So, so I mean, I, all I can really do is just, you know, in my life, assume that I do not know what the heck is going on. All I can do is do my best and set my intention towards love. And really anything that else that happens just will happen as it will, and I'll do my best to, to make my way through it. Um, but I'm doing the best that I can if my intentions are set on love. So, you know, that is sort of the idea of letting the little self step out of the way to the big self. It is like, what are the intentions of the big self? What is thy will? You know, thy will be done. Thy will be done through me. But what is thy will? And, and that is a constant question that you need to sort of ask yourself. But that, you know, ultimately it's always going to come back to love. So as long as you, you know, being confused in the most confused way that you are, that's great. That's what we're here to do is to be confused so that we do not know what's going on. We don't know the for sure that love is the way. But the more that we choose that way, the more that our faith and our will is increased. And the more that, uh, you know, we are progressing on this path spiritually. So seek what's in front of you, um, know that it is love, you are love, everyone is love, uh, it's the same thing as saying the creator, you know, it's not just this little love, it's the, the big love, all right, big, big love, so everybody, thank you so much for listening, I hope you like these rants and uh, reflections today, they're a bit more spontaneous, I'm so sorry I missed actually posting yesterday on Instagram, I think I'm just a little bit overwhelmed not overwhelmed I just I've been working a lot you know there was this, sort of this this looming mandate coming upon me and my job and so I've just been trying to work as much overtime as they'll let me um, just in case you never know what happens right so I don't know what's gonna happen all I know is that I have chosen that my free will is is important in this and that I will not be um, you know uh, I'll not do something that, that goes against my sort of free will, right? Like, I just can't do something like that. And therefore, I um, all I can know is that, you know, I set my intention to love. I'm just going to keep doing what I know to be right and pushing myself to, you know, succeed in whatever manner that is. And, you know, therefore, the, the path may seem unclear, but that's what I can do, right? I can just just keep pushing forward, know that love is true, and that no matter what happens, you know, maybe I become a poor homeless bum, but I'll still be trying to love from my heart. <laughs> but, you know, that's not going to happen. I'm just saying. You never know. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you for um, listening. Like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment. Um, please visit my website. Appreciate your support. If you wanted to check out my Patreon or my little shop that I created, um, yeah, I just, um, you know, I'm trying to give you all this stuff for free and it's a good 
good way for me to express my being and to share the things that are in my mind. And I ultimately do it to, to serve. So I hope that, um, you know, I always like that service is freely given. And so I will constantly freely give my service as uh, much as I possibly can. And I thank you all for the reciprocation. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I should be back on Monday with another podcast. Okay, take care.